We just arrived at our second deployment site. We're going to be using these devices. These are called RUVs, baited remote underwater videos. And it's a way to estimate without, you know, fishing effort, what kind of sharks we have in the area. We know that sharks use Cocos Island as a rest stop during their travels through the open ocean. But what else do we know? How many come here? How big are they? How old? To get those answers, we've got something like a shark security camera. It's un sistema bastante fácil. Estos sistemas que son estaciones de video y son básicamente para saber la composición y abundancia de especies elusivas. Entonces, lo que como funciona, ponemos carnada en este espacio y usamos dos cámaras para poder abarcar toda un área. And then, since we have those two GoPros at a known distance, that'll tell us how big the animals are that are approaching the bros. But sharks are notoriously camera shy. When's the last time you saw a shark take a selfie? How do we track them when they're not on camera? And that's what concerns us. Cocos is a marine reserve. The animals here are protected. As long as they stay put. But they don't. And beyond the island, they are vulnerable to a growing demand for shark fins and meat that's killing hammerheads by the millions. Think about it. Once an animal has disappeared after we saw it on a dive, we have no idea where it's going, whether it's staying around, whether it's traveling straight to Japan, to Antarctica. We have no idea. So how do you track an animal beneath the ocean that never stops moving and migrates thousands of kilometers? Basically, this is a pole spear, which is what we use to externally tag sharks. And all we've done is, with a PVC tube, we've created a little bay where the tag can sit in. Tagging. It's not unlike the game we play as kids, but a bit more high-tech and a lot more dangerous. So you stretch it up, and then when you release it, it's going to fire out at high speed. It's now active. The idea is to spear a shark with a tiny acoustic transmitter, or a tag. This transmitter sends out a sound, like a ping. This sound can then be recorded by acoustic receivers we've placed underwater. By putting these tags on, we'll be able to see whether they follow a particular route or whether they're just dispersing through the ocean and they happen to end up in the same place. If they follow a particular migratory pathway, then it's a lot easier to think of management actions to, to protect them. But like I said, this is a bit different from a simple game of tag. Hammerheads have to keep swimming in order to breathe, so they're constantly on the move. Sharks haven't survived for millions of years by staying still. They can swim 40 kilometers per hour and are known for their sudden twists and sharp turns. And those eyes on the sides of their heads? When a hammerhead moves back and forth, it can see nearly 360 degrees. Try sneaking up on that. With some stealth swimming, good aim, and a lot of patience, our team manages to tag two different sharks. But every tool has its limitations. These external tags are temporary, they'll eventually fall off, and have a limited range and battery life. We've answered most of what we can do, I think, with external tags. We, now we're looking at this long-term and long-range connectivity. Internal tags are another type of acoustic transmitter, but these go inside the animal. 
So, how do we get a tag inside a shark? The answer? Very carefully. Now we just need to catch a shark. The shark is flipped upside down, putting it in what's called tonic immobility. This slows down its breathing and heart rate. It's like being asleep. Once the shark is stitched up, it would hardly know it has a high-tech gadget inside. A few small incisions and a few temporary tags could help save an entire species. This gives us a whole new insight in the behavior, the really fine scale. We could never do that until this kind of technology was, was around. So I think there's a lot of questions that can be answered using this.